Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Oracle Park in San Francisco. We're right here on 3rd Street, lining up for our tour of the stadium where the San Francisco Giants play. And uh, this is one of those great ballparks. A buddy of mine from high school retired here several years ago after a great run in the major leagues. He ended up with four World Series rings. Sup, San Francisco! Hey, all right! And it's cool to see this in person. Now, I don't know if I've actually mentioned it on the channel before, but I am a Washington Nationals fan. So we get the opportunity to see the Giants play in person at Nats Park in Washington, D.C. So it's cool to be here on the opposite side of the country. And uh, opening day is actually tomorrow at, I believe, 1 p.m., April 7th. I don't know if I'm going to actually get a chance to see the game. Uh, I always end up at these parks the day before uh, the first homestand, but we're uh, we're going to see what we can see. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to go into any of the dugouts or any of the behind the scenes area because opening day is tomorrow. So we're going to go get in line and see what this tour is all about. Come with. Cubby Cove right here. That's where all the canoes and boats line up to maybe catch a home run ball over the over the wall here. Doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's pretty neat. Five straight sliders. That ball high and deep to right field, and goodbye into the water. Almost as if to say, I'm going to show you that I'm just fine. team has their own cubicle and plenty of space. They get fed up to three meals per day. There's uh, a weight room, there's a uh, workout area, there's all kinds of amenities for the visiting ball players. And we have uh, a visiting clubhouse manager who takes care of all the needs. This is the home away from home for players and they can spend eight hours in the clubhouse before they actually go out on the field. So. Um, there's all kinds of things that they might want to do back there, and our clubhouse manager does what he can to facilitate that. side of the park there's a Giants batting cage exactly the same as this the dimensions are the same the equipment is the same there's two cages and there's pitching machines that typically will be set up 60 feet 6 inches from this home plate area that's the same as it is out on the ball field and they say um, 
professional athletes say the hardest thing to do in all of professional sports is to hit a baseball thrown by a professional pitcher. That pitch can be coming anywhere from 65 to 105 miles per hour, and it has all kinds of movement. It can be a nice straight uh, fastball, it can have a sinker, uh, there's all kinds of movement that can be on that pitch. The very, very best batters of all only get hit three times every 10 of bats. For me, growing up as a Giants fan, my three favorite offensive players, Willie Mays, Lifetime batting average, 302. Barry Bonds, best hitter I ever saw. Lifetime batting average, 298. Buster Posey, lifetime batting average, 302. If any of you have a group that you want to have included in one photograph, I'm happy to take pictures. You get one? Yeah. Wow, it's small. Huh? It's small. Oh, look at little one. Wow, this is awesome. Oh, the speed cameras there. fans and fans are allowed to watch the game free of charge. They can just walk on up. Um, as I say, they each hold about 25 fans. If there are nobody waiting, people can watch the whole game for free out there. Or um, for opening day or for special events. Otherwise, after every three innings, they have to circulate out. For opening day, for things like the All-Star Game that was here in 2007, or World Series, they had to limit it to one inning because there's so many people who want to participate in that without having to pay two or three hundred dollars. So, uh, I can tell you that in 2007, I was one of the people who did not want to pay three hundred dollars to see the All-Star Game. So I waited my turn in line out there, and when my turn came up, I got to stand right under where the end is over there. And a player came up for the American League by the name of Ichiro Suzuki. Now, Ichiro hit the ball right to where I was standing, and it took a weird bounce, and Ichiro ended up having an inside the park home run. To this day, that's the only inside the park home run that's ever been hit in an all-star game. I got to see it for free. So if you're in San Francisco on a game day, you don't have a ticket for the game, you got some time to spend, Walk along the court walk. Very interesting things about Giants history along there. And take your turn. I can't guarantee you'll see any side park home run, but you never know. Every game of baseball is different. You never know what uh, uh, well, You can see us actually on the board right there. I'm waving. Kind of. On the board right there. May not come up in the zoom. Oh. So they have almost gourmet type of foods available here, and only the people who have seats in this area are allowed in this dining area. Also, they have access along this corridor, so they may see the ball players 
as they're going from their clubhouse down to where the dugouts are. Um, they have security people to keep them separated from the players and from the umpires. Um, but they can see them up close. Uh, 30 ballparks, but I've never seen a few that I like better. Pittsburgh has a very nice view, but definitely. And uh, this ballpark opened on April 11, 2000, so we've completed 23 seasons, and we're just about to begin our next one. Uh, this is a privately financed ballpark. In other words, there's no state money. privately funded baseball stadium, Major League Stadium, since Dodger Stadium opened in 1962. And it was 40 years before that, before Dodger Stadium was built. Uh, when the Warriors built their arena, just a few blocks down the road, it cost over a billion dollars. So it's not likely that there's gonna be another privately financed uh, ballpark. In order to do this one, to raise enough of the $357 million that it, total, it took to construct the field, they had to do a number of things to raise revenue just to satisfy the banks to get loans for the additional balance that they needed. One of the things they needed to do was sell naming rights. And uh, Pacific Telephone, a telephone company, uh, stepped up to the plate and agreed to pay $50 million for the naming rights of the ballpark. It became AT&T Park. And it was AT&T Park for almost 15 years. But near the end of the 20 years, AT&T told the Giants they were not going to extend beyond that. And there was one year left, and they said, if you can sell the naming rights now, we'll give them up for that last year. And right around that time, Chase Center was being built and opened for the Warriors. And the computer company Oracle said, well, we have Oracle Arena over in the East Bay, but nobody's going to use that much anymore. We want our name to be prominent among the sports people uh, of the Bay Area. So we'll step up to the plate to take over. And they got a 31-year deal for the naming rights of the ballpark now. Uh, and they paid, I, I have heard, over $300 million for that. So any of that a splash hit. And it's still pretty much a rarity. There's a counter out there that says 97. 97 is the total number of slash hits that have occurred since the ballpark opened in 2000. So that's about an average of four per year. So if you come to a game, don't expect to see a splash hit, but it's always fun when it happens. In the earlier years of the ballpark, you were a little bit more likely to see one because we had a very powerful left-handed batter by the name Barry Bonds. Out of the first 45 splash hits that occurred, Barry Bonds hit 35 of them. No other batter has ever hit more than 11. And no right-handed batter has ever hit a splash hit. They've always been hit by left-handed batters or switch hitters batting left-handed at the time they hit it. And how many splash hits are there by players from other teams? None because those are not splash hits. It has to be hit by a giant. They might be wet baseballs, but they're not splash hits. But uh, we don't keep an official total, but they tell us it's around 60. So Barry Bonds by himself in seven years had almost half, more than half as many as every player on every team in almost 25 years. games in progress and that was something that they started a few years ago just to make games go more quickly.
which was the fifth time the New York Giants won the World Series. And it was the last time the New York Giants won the World Series. Um, they didn't win it again before 1957, their final season in New York. And they didn't win it in San Francisco for another more than 50 years after that. If you have tickets for the club level, come early. Take the opportunity to learn all these stories. But there is one thing I'm going to tell you about at the very end here. Uh, by the way, this, the exhibits on this floor here change every year, except for this one here at the end. This is our Green Glove exhibit. Now, has anybody ever seen the Green Glove before? You know what it represents? In 2008, Major League Baseball decided they wanted to encourage all baseball operations to minimize the amount of garbage that's created by their baseball operations. So they decided each year they would award a green love to the organization that did the most to promote um, being responsible by eliminating garbage that goes to landfills. The Giants were already ahead of the um, field on that regard. We have a full-time recycling plant here in the ballpark. And every piece of trash that goes into the trash containers and everything that's left in the stands after the game is all collected, brought to the recycling plant, and hand-sorted. And everything that can be reused, repurposed, made into mulch, whatever, is done so. When they began the award, 2008, the Giants won it as they did in 2009 and 10 and 11 and 12 and 13 and 14 and 15 and 16 and 18 and 19 and 20. We didn't win it in 2017. First year we didn't get it. That year, Seattle got it. They did two things that year that we didn't do. One is they recycled their entire field. All of their infield, all of their outfield. All of that raised the level of stuff that was counted towards percentage of what actually ended up in landfill. And that was quite a lot of stuff. We didn't do that, we couldn't match that. Um, they did one other thing. If you go, if you're a lucky person, you go to a fan takeaway game, or giveaway game, where the team will give you a bobblehead or a cap or a bat or something like that. Well, Seattle that year had a takeaway game and they gave all of their fans a garbage bag and ask them to fill it up and take their garbage home with them. And enough fans did that that reduced their garbage from that game. And overall, what they did beat the Giants by one-tenth of one percent in 2017. So we haven't resorted to that, but we do everything we can. And we, for 2020, for example, 98 percent of all the garbage that was collected was reused and repurposed, recycled here. We've been over 95 every year for five, six, seven years. In all of Major League Baseball, there are 30 teams Every single team begins the season with the hope that at the end of the season, they will be the team that walks home with this award. This is the World Series trophy. It is, the name of the trophy is the Commissioner's Award. When they won the third one, they were convinced that they should share the so these are the three World Series championship rings, also made by Tiffany and Company, to the design uh, determined by the team itself. 
and the team management. Now that's not part of their contractual um, compensation. It's a gift. So the players all have to pay a gift. Under the pedestal of that statue is a baseball. And in radiating arcs coming from that baseball towards the ballpark, you see curves of brick. Those represent the ripples after the ball has landed and the water is rippling towards the ballpark. And if you look down here in the cement in front of us, you see that same symbol over and over again, the circle and the waves coming out. 99.99% of the people who come into the ballpark go across that without having any idea that that is a significant feature that is intentional. But you guys all know. That's cool. He's a manager that was at the Padres, but then came up here and got three World Series champs. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up here, guys. Uh, that was a great tour. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, uh, leave me a comment, uh, leave me a like. Uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I will note uh, our tour guide, Craig, wanted to give a special notification that these tours have just started as of December, 2022. They weren't running tours for years. So uh, they just want to get the word out that tours are open and you guys are welcome and invited to come on down and see this great ballpark for yourself. Anyway guys, that's it for me. I will catch you on the next one. Peace.